Hi everyone, it's Nicole Spore here today for Honeybee Stamps with some clean and simple stocking gift card holders to share with you. I am so excited about some of the latest shaped cards from Honeybee Stamps, including this stocking gift card holder that obviously holds a gift card holder inside this darling little design. While I had all the supplies out, I made multiples. So while this is a fairly clean and simple project, it does take a little bit more time simply because I created more than one. However, while you have the supplies out, it does make it handy. Now to start, I am die cutting the stocking shape from some holiday traditions pattern paper, also part of the latest release from Honeybee. To get both sides, make sure that from the second sheet of paper, you cut it from the opposite side so that they line up and match. Then you're gonna to need to die cut and insert the stocking topper, which I die cut these both from the same color of cardstock, but you don't have to. You see how that fits over and it really reinforces the top of the pull tab that the gift card goes on. And then we want to die cut the toe and the heel of the stocking. And you can die cut this from the same color as the insert or the cuff of the stocking or a contrasting color if you prefer. I die cut all of mine from some red card stock that really picks up that red in the stripe of the plaid. Remember that on the back side of the stocking, the toe and the heel are going to be adhered kind of reverse. So it's not going to be quite the same as what goes on the front, but I think it gives it a finished look. You definitely don't have to add it if you don't want to, but I kind of like having that whole finished design. We're going to go ahead and adhere the toe and the heel. And I'm using a nice strong adhesive to adhere these. And then for the stocking construction itself, putting the front and the back together, I found that a little liquid adhesive worked best. Normally, I would use a different glue than what I'm using today. I actually used glossy accents. I hardly ever let this happen, but I was completely out of all the other glue that I actually usually use. So I just grabbed what I had on hand and I'm going to use that. But what we want to do is going to kind of run a thin little line of glue around the toe and the heel. But you need to be really aware of where the stocking insert goes because you still want it to glide in the channel. So I'm going to show you that here once I get my uh, toe and heel for the back side of the stocking in place. There are some little tabs along the top sides and you want to fold those in. That really gives the gift card holder a little more movement and a little bit more room. I like to take a bone folder and kind of fold those in and then just score those to make sure they're nice and crisp. And then we can glue it together. So this is kind of how it's going to look. When we glue these with the wrong sides together, I am going to use my gift card holder insert to gauge where that glue is going to go. So you can see by laying that out where I actually can put the glue. I don't want the glue going anywhere where this is going to slide in. So I would really recommend making sure that you just take a nice little fine tip applicator of glue. And I'm going to run that along these little tabs here that we folded in and scored. And then I want to run it along the toe and just along that heel to get these two pieces together. But again, to make sure that I'm not going to interfere with the sliding of the gift card holder insert itself. Because unless the recipient knows that this does something or pulls it on accident, they're not going to know that there's something fun inside. It's a cute little card and or a cute presentation and I, it's just so much fun. Can't you imagine maybe using these as like place card holders or just have these stuck into the tree to give as, you know, gifts. I made multiples. I made several for several people in my life for this season, but definitely su such a fun project. 
Now I'm going to line these up and put them together. I will tell you that this was the first one I assembled. I found it a little easier to actually glue like the toe and the heel first, and then I'd run a little bead of glue along those sides and pinch them together and hold those together until the glue dried. That was a little easier than trying to line it up with those two little, or the four, I guess, tabs along the top sides or along those sides there. But then I would pinch them together with some tweezers, which is going to help hold that together until the glue is dry. And the thing about glossy accents is it dries really, really fast and really strong. So um, don't put a ton of glue there. You do not want it squeezing out and maybe interfering with the channel. And as I mentioned, I would really, really highly recommend um, a different glue, uh, any kind of glue, other liquid glue would probably work better, but I think I'm literally out of all of my glue. So anyway, once I have the stocking constructed, and it did take me a minute, I'm just gonna take my bone folder and kind of go down the side and secure those and make sure it's really pinched tight and secure. We don't want the gift card coming out. We don't want um, the stocking coming apart. And I didn't use very much glue because I was a little worried about it seeping down or seeping underneath and maybe hit, kind of inhibiting the movement of the slider mechanism. And then I'm just going to pinch that shut and kind of lay it over to the side once I get it the way I want. I fiddled with this first one a lot, I promise. The construction for the rest, as most things, went really fast. And I did the rest completely assembly line style. That means I constructed the stocking, I constructed the insert, I stamped the insert, then I constructed the tag and attached it to the to the stocking, and then I finally constructed the wreath, which was by far the most time consuming part of this, and I will show you why. There are ways you could totally speed that up, and when we get to that part in the video, I'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, you could also decorate with something completely different. Um, there's some great alphabet dies that I think you could customize each of the stocking with those, and that would be really, really fun. So the next part of my stocking creation, I wanted to decorate with this wreath. This wreath from the um, awesome, awesome Joy Noel wreath die collection, also brand new. Almost everything I'm using today, um, with the exception of the tag and then the pull me sentiment is brand new. I want to create this beautiful little wreath. It fits perfectly and it's just so, so pretty. I'm gonna attach that stocking topper, which I really, really like because it reinforces this top of the pull tab so that it doesn't get all funky and bend and it pulls out really easily. But look how cute this is. Isn't this just a fun little decoration if you wanted to. I just love these stockings. So there is the construction of the stocking. And now we want to put together that wreath, as I mentioned, the Joy Noel wreath. So you can spell out the word Joy or Noel on a larger project. It's not really going to fit on the stocking. Or you can use the wreath on its own, which is what I opted to do here today, is going to use the wreath on the on its own. Now I really thought I would use two shades of green and I absolutely didn't like that. I think it's kind of important to show the process and so I left this in. And what I ended up deciding to do, I'm going to keep the dark green wreath, but I am going to die cut another wreath from brown cardstock and then I'm going to die cut the individual leaves that you can see I'm fiddling with here from the dark green cardstock. And on our brown wreath, we are going to construct the wreath, meaning we're gonna take all these little individual leaves and glue them in place. Then we will layer the entire wreath over the green wreath to really make it full. This is where I'm saying if you want to eliminate this step because this was the only time consuming step of the whole thing. Um, and that is simply gluing all these little teeny tiny leaves in place. But I think the leaves really make the, the wreath pop. 
but I've also seen some amazing examples of this wreath that don't feature doing all these little individual leaves. So what I found easiest was to die cut a bunch of leaves. I have my crystal katana here. I have some liquid glue and I'm adding dabs of glue to the leaves and I did several at a time, not all, but several at a time and then I would pick them up and glue them in place. And I just moved around the wreath. I tried not to skip any area. I just moved so I wouldn't miss a leaf. And I love how this turns out. I think it looks so, so pretty. And I really liked the brown wreath base with the green leaves. And then when I popped the other green wreath that we die cut previously that you can see over there on the left side of the screen, back behind this one, it makes it super, super full. So I think that's a really fun little idea as well. Another idea is to layer just multiple green wreaths together or add some sparkle in there or some foiled cardstock. That would be super cute. Lots of ways to dress up the wreath. Now I did save some time. We are not going to die cut the berries for the wreath. I will die cut the bow from the wreath from the red cardstock we used for uh, the stocking gift card insert and the toe and the heel, but I am not going to be gluing or die cutting and gluing all the little red berries. We're going to use some awesome crystal gems from this Honeybee Stamps release. These are the holiday traditions. I love, this is the same collection that the pattern paper comes from. And we're going to take red uh, gems from that and decorate our wreath. So those are the two dies I used to construct my wreath from the Joy Noel wreath. I've got a sentiment here. This is a little individual stamp. It's the Love Santa. And I stamped You've Been Good, Love Santa. You could stamp anything or you could totally leave this part off if you wanted to. The tag itself is from a die collection from last year. And it's called the Gift Bag Card. So another shaped card but the tag really worked nice to fit this sentiment. Now on the bow pieces, I'm taking a Copic marker and adding shading. This is to deepen and darken these a little bit, give them a little bit more of that bow-like look, and then we're gonna assemble them. There's three pieces. There's the large piece with the tails, then the smaller piece that layers on top of that, and then the center piece. And I die cut all of them, I shaded all of them, I glued them together, and then we're going to at, pop that to the top of our wreath. And I think it gives it a really pretty finished look. When doing the assembly line construction of the wreath, I die cut them all, I colored them all, I assembled them all, and then I glued them all to the wreath. So if you're making multiples, that is a quick and easy way to do a whole bunch at a time. You could also completely leave out the shading and that will save you a little bit, a few minutes as well. So I've glued this to the top of my wreath. If you're worried at all about making sure it stays put, I like to pinch it with a pair of tweezers until that liquid glue dries. In fact, I left those in place while I took a craft knife and picked up some of the Holiday Traditions Red Gems and pop them all around my wreath. And these add a nice little touch of sparkle as well, as opposed to a cardstock die cut berry. So I like the texture and the look of the crystal gems used on this wreath design. Now our tag was die cut from white cardstock and stamped with a black ink. I felt like it needed a pop of color, so I will be adding a little red Copic marker to the heart in the word love. I think that just ties it all together nicely. The stocking, I did forget to mention this when I was die cutting the stocking. The stocking is big enough that you are really probably going to need two sheets of 6x6 six six cardstock or a single sheet of a larger, not cardstock, pattern paper or a larger sheet of pattern paper or cardstock to die cut the two sides from because I don't think you can get two from a single sheet of six by six pattern paper. 
Now around the top of the stocking, not the insert, just the stocking, I am going to just kind of wrap around some natural jute twine and tie it into a little, not really a knot yet, but I'm just going to kind of thread those together. You want to put a little dab of glue probably back behind that on the stocking so it stays put and doesn't slide up and off. But I'm going to put a little dab of glue back behind there, thread on my tag, and then just kind of fiddle with the bow a little bit. And then I want to put a dab of glue on that as well so it doesn't come loose. And there is kind of what it's going to look like. You can see I'm just adding my little dabs of glue here. That's going to secure the knot. That's going to secure where the twine is attached to the stocking. And it adds a fun decorative touch, especially when I'm creating a card that does not have to be mailed. Um, this could if, if I wanted to, but I'm thinking more of tucking these like in the tree and actually giving these in person as gifts. But I like adding those dimensional embellishments. Now I really felt like this is so beautiful and so cute. It, doesn't really say, hey, this is a gift. So I absolutely love stamp sets that tell you that the card does something, whatever kind of inter interactive card it is. And Honeybee Stamps has a great stamp and coordinating die set, if you want to use dies, that is called One of a Kind. And this has all kinds of sentiments like made for you, handle, uh, with cake, like you can mix and match the sentiments. But uh, handle, press, so you could do press me, open me, uh, close me, handle with care, push me, pull me, whatever. I mean, lots and lots of sentiments, you guys. I opted to take the words pull and me and an arrow, and I'm going to stamp those with clear embossing ink on the top part, the part that actually pulls out of the stocking, with a clear embossing ink and heat emboss with white embossing powder. And it's really small and subtle, but it tells the recipient, this, there's something inside. So pull this so that you know, or you can reveal the gift card inside of here. So I'm going to, I fiddled with that. I played with all different size arrows and all of the things, but just uh, ended up using pull me and like the small little curly or half, kind of half moon arrow. And we're going to take those. And I ended up putting this in my Misty. I also put the sentiment for the tag in my Misty, left them there. Uh, one on one side and one on the other so that I could assembly line style stamp both of these. I stamped my tags, I stamped the stocking toppers, and that worked really, really well. I always like to use a powder tool when embossing to help keep the embossing powder only on the embossed area, the embossing ink area. I'm going to sprinkle on my white embossing powder. We are going to heat set this. And then the powder does leave residue and it doesn't look very attractive. And so what I always like to do, and I recommend let it sit for a minute. You want that embossing powder to cool. It cools quickly, but you want it to cool all of the way. And then take a dry rag or your finger or something and buff away that powder um, to give your project that beautiful finished look. So I'm just taking a microfiber cloth in my office and just buffing that away. And then we can replace the insert. Look how cute that is. Isn't that so much fun? I have a gift card here. What I would recommend, you can glue it in place with whatever. I decide I was going to use a heavy duty adhesive and that's like, no, better not. Um, I'm going to take some glue dots and put a couple on the back of my gift card. And then I'm just going to pop that right onto there. You can see how perfectly it fits. And then slide that in to the stocking. And look, it goes in and out so easily and is the perfect uh, way to present gift cards for the holidays. So here is a final look at all of my 
fun little stocking gift card holders created with different patterned papers from that holiday traditions paper pad. And then of course, cardstock for the contrasting pieces and the slider mechanism. Thank you guys so much for joining me today for these stocking gift card holders featuring honeybee stamps, dies, pattern paper, and crystal gems. The supplies I used to create these stocking gift card holders are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Thank you so much for joining me today and we'll catch you next time.